Hello everyone, in this video we'll be solving a factorial equation. We have done a factorial system before, I'll share the link down below. This problem is from Romania, I'll share the link to the resource as well, let's get started. So we have 1 plus x factorial times 1 plus y factorial, and that is equal to the quantity x plus y factorial. And we're going to be looking for non-negative integer solutions. So let's take a look at some special cases first. For example, what happens if x is equal to 0? Let's go ahead and replace x with 0. And let's not forget that 0 factorial is equal to 1, not 0. So if you do that, you're going to get 1 plus 1, which is 2, times the quantity 1 plus y factorial is equal to y factorial. Now, when you look at this problem, you, you probably notice, hopefully, that 1 plus y factorial is already larger than y factorial. It's one more than that. When you multiply by 2, it's going to get even bigger because we're looking for non-negative solutions, which means that we don't get a solution from here. So if x, x is equal to 0, we do not get any solutions. So we're going to be looking at another case then. How about if x is equal to 1? Okay. If x is equal to 1, then I'll replace x with 1. 1 factorial is equal to 1, so it's going to give me 2 again, times 1 plus y factorial. But on the right-hand side, this time I should be getting something like the quantity 1 plus y factorial. Now, when you look at this equation carefully, you can test some values, and you're going to notice that, hopefully, y equals 2 is a solution. Now, how did I know that? Well, just by testing some values. Are there any other solutions? That's what we need to look at, all right? So, but definitely y equals 2 is a solution, which means that 1 comma 2 is going to be one of the solutions as an ordered pair. Let's go ahead and check if there are any other values of y that could work besides the 2. And, of course, we're talking about when x is equal to 1. So, what if uh, y is greater than 2? Now, something interesting happens if y is greater than 2, because 1 plus y is going to be greater than 3 in this case. And any factorial after this point is going to be a multiple of 3, which means we can safely say that if y is greater than 2, then 3 divides the quantity 1 plus y factorial. Now, why did I bring up the 3? Because I'm going to be checking the left-hand side as well uh, for divisibility, and we're going to conclude from there. Now, if you look at the left-hand side of this equation here, which is this one, does a 3 also divide that quantity? And my claim is 3 does not divide 2 times 1 plus y factorial. Let me explain why that's the case. Of course, this is just a claim, right? It needs to be proven. Now, first of all, notice that since uh, 1 plus y is greater than 3 or y is greater than 2, it means that y factorial is going to be divisible by 3, which means 3 divides y factorial. When you add 1 to it, Obviously, you're going to get something that's not divisible by 3 because two consecutive numbers cannot be divisible by 3 at the same time, right? So a 3 does not divide 1 plus y factorial, which means 3 does not divide this expression either because 3 doesn't divide 2 either. And if a number doesn't divide any factor in the product, then it doesn't divide the product. So this claim is true. Now, what is that supposed to mean? 3 divides the one side, 3 doesn't divide the other side. It divides the right-hand side, it doesn't divide the left-hand side. It means that you don't get any solutions for y greater than 2. We don't get any solutions. But what about for x equals 1 and y equals 1? Let's go ahead and check that because we haven't checked it yet, right? So let's go ahead and check that situation now. If x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1, we can just go ahead and substitute. It's very easy to check, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we get 1 plus 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1. And on the right-hand side, we get 1 plus 1 factorial, which is 2 factorial. So this is 2 times 2, which is 4. And obviously, 4 does not equal 2 factorial. So we do not get any solutions from here. In other words, 1, 1 is not a solution. All right? We had to check that because... We already know that for y values that are greater than 2, it doesn't work. For y equals 2, it works, but we haven't checked anything for y less than 2. Okay, do we need to check for x equals 1 and y equals 0? No, because remember at the beginning we looked at x equals 0 and x and y are interchangeable because of the symmetry. This means that for y equals 0, you're not going to get any x values either. Okay, so we don't need to check that. Cool. Now, is there anything else we, we need to look at? 
Well, let's take a look at it from a different perspective. And I'd, I'd like to make a parity argument here. So if X and Y are both greater than or equal to 2, let's see what happens. And let's remember our expression. The original expression was 1 plus X factorial times 1 plus Y factorial. And that should equal X plus Y quantity factorial. Now, if X and Y are greater than or equal to 2, here's what happens. X factorial is going to be even. So X factorial is going to be even. And that means Y factorial is also going to be even because they're both greater than or equal to 2. But this also means that 1 plus X factorial and 1 plus Y factorial are both odd. So when you multiply two odd numbers, you're going to be getting an odd product. So the left-hand side of this equation is going to be odd if X and Y are greater than or equal to 2. What happens to the right-hand side? Well, since X and Y are added and then you factorial them, that's going to be an even number because we know that if X and Y are greater than or equal to 2, then X plus Y is going to be greater than or equal to 4. And obviously, X plus Y factorial is going to be even, right? Anything greater than 4, or, I mean even 2, is going to give us even results, which means that we do not get any solutions from here. So that kind of gives us a boundary, what we should look at, but I just wanted to save it for the end. And so we got one solution only so far, right, that works, and that would be 1, 2. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and write it up and just conclude the video. Now, we said that there are no solutions for x, or y, x and y greater or equal to 2, and we know that for 0, we don't have any solutions. We don't have any solutions for x equals, well, here's the thing. One thing we didn't check was x equals 2. And let me tell you why we didn't check that, right? Because I check x equals 1, I check x equals 0, and I kind of looked at the values that are greater or equal to 2. Well, this kind of, I think, explains it for x equals 2. We're not going to get a solution either, but here's one thing we have to say. We got a solution for y equals 2, remember? So for x equals 1, we got that y is equal to 2. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means that 1, 2 is a solution, but it also means that since we have a symmetrical equation, this also means that if x is equal to 2, then y is equal to 1 because they're interchangeable. So 2, 1 is also another solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Tomorrow, I'll see you with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.